Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Natalie and I do videos on handbag reviews, unboxing, a bit of luxury eye candy. So if you like that kind of content, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you back. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys my one year review on my Cartier Small Love Bracelet. And I purchased this in August last year, so it's been just over a year, but I wanted to share my thoughts and what I think of it and whether or not I still think it's worth it after a year. So I've just got it in the box here. If you guys haven't seen my unboxing of this, I'll link that video up here. I did a full unboxing of it. I showed you every little detail of what comes with it. But yeah, so I've just got it in here and I don't always keep it in here. It's always on my wrist 24 seven. But for the purposes of this video, I want to share with you guys how it came packaged and what it looks like. So this is the small version. So the thinner love bracelet, not the classic traditional one, which is a lot thicker. And I purchased it for 6,100 Australian dollars last year and I think since then it's gone up a couple of times or maybe once but it now retails for around 6,450 Australian dollars if I'm not mistaken I'll link it in the description box below if you want to check it out but Cartier often do price increases if not every year maybe once every two years and it goes up about five percent which doesn't sound like much but on an item that is over six thousand dollars five percent is still a lot of money so the Cartier Small Love Bracelet that I have is in the 18 karat yellow gold and it's the classic one so it's just a solid gold. With the Love Bracelets they come in 4 diamonds, 10 diamonds and Parve which is diamonds around the whole bracelet. So they obviously range from a lot more if you want diamonds in it but this is just the regular classic one. This is in the 18 karat yellow gold. It also comes in an 18 karat pink gold which is like a rose gold but it's actually copyrighted to Cartier like that shade of rose gold or pink gold is actually unique to Cartier so if you really like Cartier's pink gold or rose gold it won't be replicated anywhere else because they've actually copyrighted that color and then it also comes in a 18 karat white gold which is a little bit more expensive and if you were to add the diamonds to the white gold version it comes in rhodium plating which gives it more of like a white shine to it so yeah just in case you guys are interested or wanted to know more about the different types of the Cartier Love bracelets or the small love bracelets those are all the different variations. I'll take it out of the packaging and show you closer up what it looks like. So with the love bracelet they all come with the little screwdriver so this is in gold. I don't think it's actual gold it's just like a gold plating screwdriver whereas with the bracelet it is actually solid 18 karat yellow gold. So on the bracelet there's actually one side to it where it has like a little screw on it so you can kind of see it popping out a little bit there so you just take the screwdriver and just unscrew it and then you can pop it open like that and you'll see that it's actually connected by the hinge here so it's just one piece whereas with the traditional love bracelet there's two screws so you just take one side off and the other side off and the actual two bars like the two bracelet bars actually come apart so you've got two pieces so that's the main difference between the two but this makes it a lot easier to put on and off yourself because of just like the one mechanism so you can just use it like a little bangle like, like a little bracelet hook it on like that and then click it in place and then turn it to lock it whereas with the classic one or the traditional one you need kind of like two hands or like one hand to hold it in place with the screws and then use the other hand to lock it in place with the screwdriver so you kind of need someone to help you put it on. It probably is possible to do it yourself but it's a lot harder whereas this is like one quick motion you just pop it on lock it and that's one of the reasons why I love this version of the love bracelet because it's really easy to take it on and off yourself and not that I take it on and off all the time but whenever I need to or want to it's just really easy to do myself and I don't need to get Anthony or anyone else to help me take it off. So in this video I'll be going through the pros and cons of the small love bracelet and do a mini comparison between the small one and the traditional one. Even though I don't have the traditional one I have done a lot of research and seen a lot of reviews online and when I was comparing the two last year when I was deciding between which one to purchase I did my own research and comparison between the two. I'll also do a one year wear and tear on it and also share with you guys my thoughts and whether or not I think it's worth it. So with the wear and tear there's obviously going to be a lot of scratches on it just because it is a smooth surface like a flat gold surface area and it's very shiny so you're going to see scratches really quickly and really easily. So even within the first couple of days of wearing it I already saw so much scratches or just minor hairline scratches throughout the bracelet and I already knew that going into it and that was completely fine it's just minor hairline scratches and I think the camera is actually picking up the scratches a lot better 
than what you would see in person. Like in person, it's still very shiny. It's hardly noticeable unless you look very closely at it. I do have some more deeper scratches, but I wouldn't even, even classify them as deep scratches. They're just more noticeable compared to all the other hairline scratches. And that's just because one side of the bracelet I wear, obviously, at the bottom of my wrist so that constantly touches surfaces like tables like when i'm typing or doing stuff around the house it just knocks on things and that's just a given anyway so the first signs of wear you'll see on the bracelet are within the first couple of weeks and that's just a given but then after the first couple of weeks after you've worn it and got all those hairline scratches all over it you won't really see any more wear or that much more wear on it unless of course you bang it on something really heavily and you scratch it but other than that all the hairline scratches because you've already like kind of I, wouldn't, I don't want to say damaged but in a way you've already scratched it so it's not going to get any worse if that makes sense so even after three months four months six months a year the wear on it still looks the same as what it did when i first got it like within the first two weeks so i think that it's held up extremely well it still has a beautiful gold shine to it it has such a nice kind of reflective shine so I love it. It still looks new from afar and even with all the scratches it's still really beautiful and really shiny so I still think that after a year of wear this has held up extremely well and even after a couple of years, five years, ten years I still think it's going to look very similar or if not the same. I can just use a polishing cloth and just wipe it down really easily. So yeah that's what I love about this because it is solid gold it's not going to tarnish it's not going to wear away you can wear it for years and years to come if not forever so yeah the hairline scratches are the main areas of wear that you'll see on the bracelet another thing I wanted to mention with this closure is that there is a little clicking noise you can hear so I don't know if you can hear that but it's just pushing me pushing the two sides together and it makes that little clicking noise so I haven't locked it yet but when I do lock it it's less noticeable it's still there you can still hear a tiny bit of clicking but it's not as noticeable as when it was unlocked and at first I thought I had like a loose screw or it was just faulty but when I took it back to my Cartier store my essay actually said that's normal and she got out a couple of other bracelets the small love bracelets and that was completely normal and I haven't had any issues it hasn't unlocked or anything or it hasn't loosened over time it hasn't even like slightly turned at all so once you lock it it's secure and locked just because it is two pieces of gold and because you are locking it in place there's still got to be some friction between it so that's where it comes from and she showed me a couple of others and they were the same too so it's not faulty it's just normal so i'll just pop it on and you'll see that it's very easy to put on and on yourself so just hook it over like that and just lock it in place and I did mention in my unboxing video that I used to put like tape over the screwdriver just to make sure that I'm not scratching the bracelet if I accidentally slip or something. But because it's got so much scratches already, I'm not too fussed about it and I just don't really mind. I am careful when I'm locking and unlocking it, but I haven't had any issues with slippage or anything. But if you just wanted to be a little bit careful, that's just a small tip to put scotch tape around the top of the screwdriver so then when you lock it, the metal of the screwdriver is not touching the actual metal of the bracelet or the gold of the bracelet so that's just a little tip check that video out if you haven't seen that yet and i'll show you what i did with it but yeah now that i have it on let's go through some of the pros and cons of the cartier small love bracelet so let's start off with the pros because i love my pros so the very first pro of the small love bracelet is that it's so beautiful it's still so shiny even after a year of wear and tear and all the scratches you can see it's still got a beautiful glistening shine to it so the second pro is that it's solid gold so you don't have to worry about taking it off when you go to shower or if you go swimming you don't have to take it off when you go swimming but i just would rather take it off just to, as a little precaution so i don't lose it but it's completely fine to wear it anywhere 24 7 it doesn't matter because it's solid gold it's not going to tarnish it's not going to change color or anything so that's a huge pro it's solid gold the third pro is that because it's so simple and plain it matches everything so even if i'm just wearing like a shirt like this or a t-shirt or just very casual 
or very dressy it just matches with anything and you can stack it with other bracelets i often stack it with my van cleef and arpels sweet alumbra bracelet but i've just popped it on here for now just so this can shine on its own so yeah this matches with anything you can stack it it goes with any outfit the fourth pro with the small love bracelet is that it's really easy to take on and off as you saw earlier i could just easily pop it on and take it off myself with no issues the fifth pro is that it's a fraction of the cost of the traditional love bracelet i think the traditional love bracelet costs around nine thousand nine hundred dollars which is crazy almost ten thousand dollars whereas this small love bracelet you're getting a very similar look obviously it's a lot smaller and daintier but it's still a solid gold bangle or bracelet this one retails for six thousand four hundred and fifty australian dollars now so yeah you save about three and a half thousand dollars by purchasing the smaller love bracelet and then the final pro of the cartier small love bracelet or the love bracelet in general is that you hardly ever have to clean it I have probably only taken this off to clean and polish maybe twice since I've purchased it last year and that's just because of the solid gold nature of it. It's so shiny, it's so pretty. The only signs of like dirt or like areas where you might have to clean often is just on the hinge here. So because that is the part that's touching your wrist the whole time and obviously during summer or you just sweat, <laughs> it just gets caught in that little hinge part. But even then, it's not that bad. And yeah, that's probably the only areas where you'll need to keep it clean. You can just use like a polishing cloth, just wipe it down. It takes literally two seconds and it's just really shiny and brand new, almost brand new again. So yeah, that's a huge pro. You don't have to constantly clean it. It's not like sterling silver where it will tarnish over time and you just have to constantly keep it clean with a polishing cloth and with cleaning products. This is completely fine because it is that solid gold material. So now going into some of the cons, I may be contradicting myself now by saying the price tag because I just said the price tag was a pro, but overall, not comparing it to the love bracelet, this is very expensive for just a gold bracelet or bangle, and you could easily just go to a jeweler and get a solid gold bracelet, a very similar looking solid gold bracelet like this for a fraction of the cost, and you're obviously just paying for the name brand, you're paying for Cartier, but that's just a given with anything luxury, anything designer, you're just paying for the name brand and that could be a huge con for some people. So the second con with the small love bracelet and the love bracelet in general is that it gets scratched really, really easily. And as you saw earlier, there's so much hairline scratches all around it. So it's not gonna be pristine forever and it definitely won't be pristine within the first couple of days of wearing it because of its flat, smooth surface. It just gets dinged up and scratched on anything and everything. So yeah, once you wear it, it will never look brand new again and you'll definitely see signs of wear after a couple of days or a couple of weeks of wearing it. So that might bother some people. So I would see that as a con. It scratches super, super easily. The third con is that it's really common. So that might put some people off. It's just too mainstream, like everyone and their mum has the love bracelet from Cartier. So that might put some people off. It doesn't put me off. I still really love it, but for some of you guys out there, you may not like it because it's too overdone, too out there, too common. The fourth con is that it can feel a little bit restrictive and if you're not used to wearing a jewellery piece or anything on your wrist 24-7, that may bug you. You can take it on and off, obviously, if you wanted to like every night, but I wouldn't really suggest or recommend doing that because you don't want to loosen the screw too, too much and I just don't know how that'll wear over time if you're constantly unscrewing it and then screwing back on every single day for 365 days of the year. So I just don't know how that'll wear over time. So it's not recommended you take it on and off. It's recommended you put it on and keep it on forever, like 24 seven and never take it off. So I wouldn't recommend it if you guys are the type to always take your jewelry off. I am the type to take my jewelry off every night, but I have gotten used to this. So it took me a little while to get used to it, maybe a couple of weeks before I actually got used to it and just completely forgot about it. The first couple of days of wearing it, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to take this off. Like, I just feel like it's just so constrictive and I can't really do anything. Like, it's just really annoying on my wrist the whole time. But after a couple of weeks, I got used to it and now I don't even notice it. So yeah, that could be a con to some people. Those of you who like taking your jewelry off or just don't like the feeling of having jewelry on your wrists or your neck or anything like that, any jewelry at all, this may be a con for you. So the fifth and final con with the Cartier Love Bracelet or the small love bracelet that I see is the sizing. 
and that's because I feel like I'm in between sizes but Cartier don't offer in between sizes and I might go into all the sizing now because I think that it might be helpful for some of you guys who are thinking of purchasing this too so I have it in the size 17 centimeters so it's recommended to measure the wrist measure like with a tape measure and add 1.5 centimeters to your wrist size and that will be your perfect match but for me, when I measured my wrist size, it's around 16 centimeters, maybe just a tad under, but let's just say 16 centimeters. So the recommended size for me would be 17 and a half centimeters, but they don't offer half sizes. So I either had to go a size up, which is 18 centimeters, or go down, which is 17, 17 centimeters. But when I tried the 18 centimeter size on, it was just way too loose. Like it literally, when I went like this, the bracelet actually fell probably like halfway down my hand so it was just way too loose and even my essay was like no that's definitely not for you and i could easily rotate it around but with the 17 centimeters it's a little bit more snug so that's why i felt it was a little bit tight but my essay was like no it's fine the 18 is just way too big for you you can't get away with 18 so you have to go with the 17 and it i do have some movement here but I still feel like it's a little bit constrictive, like I wish it was a tad bit looser, but with the Cartier Love bracelets, they're not meant to have much movement at all, I don't think. So you're not even meant to be able to spin it around on your wrist. I can if I force it to, so it does spin, but not easily. So that's what that's why my essay said it's a good fit because you can't easily spin it. Because the bracelet is like oval in shape, it fits to your wrist really, really nicely. It's supposed to fit really snugly. Snugly, it's really snug. <laughs> I'll take it off and show you because it probably will be easier to see when it's off my wrist. So you can see that the bracelet is actually oval in shape. It's not like a typical bracelet where it's like a circular shape. It's actually oval and that's because our wrists are oval in shape. They're not like a complete circle and so it's intended for the love bracelet to sit very snug on your wrist and kind of flush against it so there's not real much movement and my essay even said if I went for a size 18 and there was a lot of movement, I could move it around like a classic typical bangle, I would get so, so much scratches and so much wear on it. So it's not recommended to do that. It's always recommended to go down a size and just have something snug on your wrist. So yeah, the sizing could be a con to some people who are also in between sizes like me. But as I mentioned, after wearing it a couple of weeks, a couple of months, I've just gotten used to it and I don't even notice it anymore. So now that we've gone through the pros and cons of the Cartier Love Bracelet, I wanted to do a quick comparison between the small love bracelet and the regular one. So obviously the price tag is a huge difference. This one, as I mentioned, is 6,450, I believe. And the regular one is 9,900, I think. Huge three and a half thousand difference between the two. So the second main difference is obviously the width of it. So the sizing, the traditional love bracelet is probably double in thickness or the width of the small love bracelet and that could be a huge deal breaker for some of you. Some of you might think that the small love bracelet is a bit too thin, too dainty for your wrist. So if you had larger wrists or you just prefer a more statement piece, definitely go for the larger traditional love bracelet because it is, as I mentioned, double in size of thickness compared to this small love bracelet. The third main difference is the opening and the mechanism of them. So as I mentioned earlier, this just has one screw and a hinge so you can just take it off and it's just one piece whereas with the traditional love bracelet it's got two screwdrivers so you unscrew them both and they both come apart into two separate pieces so that makes it a lot more difficult to put on it is more traditional that way but I just find this is so much easier to put on yourself and you don't have to worry about losing the screws because I have heard so many horror stories of people with the traditional love bracelet where the screw has actually come loose over time and because it is two separate parts one of the halves have fallen off completely so that's just a huge like worry for me and this hasn't come loose at all it's hasn't even slightly turned with this it is a screw mechanism but it's not like a traditional screw where you have to like rotate it 360 to unscrew it it's just like a little almost like a 45 degree angle that you turn it to unlock and then turn it back 45 degrees to lock it so it's just like a little mechanism to keep it really secure and i find this so much more user-friendly. So the fourth difference I can't really speak too much of but I imagine there would be a small difference is just the weight of it because obviously this is like half the size of the traditional love bracelet. I wouldn't say this is heavy in any way but I do notice it so imagine the traditional love bracelet would be 
slightly heavier or more noticeable on your wrist. So yeah, those are the main observations I made with the two bracelets and why I ultimately went for the small love bracelet. Obviously, I love my daintier pieces. I want to be able to stack it with other things and also the price tag, but also the mechanism. I just didn't want to worry about the screws coming loose over time and I just I would be so heartbroken if I lost the Cartier Love bracelet because I would have spent so so much money on it. So yeah, that's why I ultimately went for this one. So before we get into my recommendation and whether or not I think it's worth it, I want to share with you guys some tips that I learned along the way to help minimize the scratches and the wear on it and also just some ways to wear it better. I guess. So what I mean by that is with this I've noticed the screw on it, it kind of like dips down underneath. So I don't know if you can see that there, but it's like a little circular hole where the screwdriver sits. And often if you have it on your wrist like this, where it's like sitting like that, I found that it leaves like little circle holes, like little indents on your wrist. Hopefully you can see on camera. If not, I'll do like close-up shots of what I mean. But because gravity kind of like pulls it down a little bit like that and your wrist is often like this not like this if that makes sense I find that because that little hole or that little thing there I don't know what to call it but that kind of like sticks down it rests against the wrist and it just leaves little holes or little imprints on your wrist so what I do I actually rotate it so then that part is actually sitting down so then the gravity is actually pulling it down that way so it's not actually touching my wrist at all. So the hinge part is actually the one that's on top of my wrist. I'm ho I hope I make sense, but I found that I don't get that little hole mark anymore because the hinge of it is actually very smooth. There is a little dip there you can see, but there's no actual hole or anything or mark or indentation that would leave on my wrist. So I found that is a much better way to wear the bracelet. So the second tip I have for you guys is something that you could probably do more during winter or the colder months when you're wearing like a jumper or a long sleeve shirt. And that's just to pull over the jumper or the long sleeve shirt over the bracelet. So it covers it. So when you're like typing or doing other things, the actual bracelet itself is not banging on anything. It's got like that little buffer or the cushion of the jumper or the shirt to kind of like stop it from scratching any further so that's one way you could prevent more wear and tear on the bracelet by just covering it and rather than having it exposed I think if you really wanted to be really safe and secure and it was like a summer day or like a hot day where you're wearing a t-shirt you can put like a sweatband over it if you know you're going to be on the computer for a really long time and you just don't want it to be banging on the table but I think that's a bit excessive and I wouldn't do that I think it's just common wear and tear it's just going to get banged up anyway but I guess if you're wearing a jumper or anything like that and you have the sleeve to cover it anyway, you may as well. So yeah, that's my second tip on how to prevent more wear and tear on the bracelet. So now let's get into my recommendation on whether or not I still think it's worth it, even after all the pros and cons, the wear and tear, the price tag of it now. I honestly would say that it is still worth it. If you've been eyeing it for a really long time, I still think it's worth it. Definitely get it sooner rather than later because as I mentioned Cartier do price increases every year if not maybe a couple of years and it's at least five percent on the love bracelet because it's so iconic they can just up the price and everyone will still want it so I would say definitely get it before it reaches like the ten thousand dollar mark because I bet in a couple of years it probably will be ten thousand dollars and then the traditional love bracelet will be like fifteen thousand dollars so yeah i would highly recommend getting the small love bracelet because you can stack it with other things i love my daintier pieces anyway and i still think that this is substantial enough where it stands out on your wrist i don't have the thinnest of wrists but it still stands out as you can see it's still super super shiny and it still makes a statement but again because it is the thin thinner version you can put like another bracelet with it and stack it and it looks so so nice whereas if you were to purchase the larger love bracelet it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult you can still stack it but it just makes it really bulky and more of a statement piece so i love how this can be very dainty on its own you can wear it by itself or you can stack it and make it more statement -y, if that makes sense so yeah i would absolutely 100 percent recommend this it is cartier it is going to be a forever piece it's so timeless they've been around for decades and 
they're just yeah absolutely classic so you can't go wrong with a Cartier love bracelet but yeah that's my one year update of the Cartier the small love bracelet let me know if you guys own this bracelet or if you're thinking of purchasing it now after watching this video I love to hear from you guys in the comment section below if you guys found this video helpful please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I'd love to see you back in future videos I have a lot more content planned so stay tuned for that but until then I hope to see you in my next one bye